Hello and welcome to another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and I'm here to let you know that this is a not safe for work podcast. We are teachers at the end of the week and really the end of our rope, and we'd like to be able to talk honestly and openly about education without, you know, having to worry about losing our jobs. So we'll be using pseudonyms throughout the podcast. I'd like to thank our friends at Patreon who help sponsor us and keep us going. That's right, we have a Patreon for as little as five to ten dollars you can join. You get access to all kinds of lots of bonus extra episodes, exclusive content. We have new stuff coming out many times a month. It's amazing. We had a watch party for the movie Real Genius last week. I got to chat with a bunch of our patrons. We had some real heart-to-heart. I shared more than I probably should have, but that's the booze. Anyway, I'd like to thank a lot of our patrons, so here we go. Big thanks to Samantha D, Lisa C, Rachel, Tarina, Exhausted Band Director, Kim K, Noel R, Alan H, Kim K, Jessica A, Swiffelev Owners, Amanda F, Ariana L, Physics Runner, Melissa V, Steph, Science Teach 17, Michael M, Kim C, William P, Sarah O, Aldrich T, La Scorpianita, Britt M, Tisha C, Teresa H, Biker Teach, Caitlin L, Marsha M, Weaza, Kristen B, Miss Alabama, Kristen B, Huvian, Ashley M, Jason F, Amber H, Abby T, Ann T, Sarah B, Regina F, Ann L, Josie S, Sam B, Lucy P, Mary E, Jamie B, Hope H, Aaron D, Kristen W, Vanessa J, Mary C, Rylan L, Catherine S, RJR, Kristen C, Johanna H, Tony and Christina K, Irma A, Nimi, Melissa M, and Sarah N. Thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast. I love each and every one of you. I'd also like to thank our sponsor at Ludlam Dramatics. Yes, if you are a theater teacher or you know a theater teacher in your building, go to Ludlam Dramatics. They have some of the best theater resources on the market. If you are teaching a concept like how to put on stage makeup, or what the parts of the stage are, or what the fuck not to do backstage, go to them because they have posters that you can put on your wall and explain it, and they're like seven bucks each or eight bucks each. They're amazing. Go to ludlandramatics.com. Now, friends, we are teachers, and we are in this whole panoramic shitstorm that everything's going on. There's no subs. Every class is having to merge. Their admin's losing their mind because they don't know how to do their job anymore. We're losing our minds because we really can't do our job anymore. It's tough times, so please take care of your mental health. If you feel you're getting to the breaking point, take a few deep breaths. Look at your insurance plan. Most educational ed- insurance plan covers therapy, counseling, Talk to someone. Don't hold it in. These are hard times, and you're going to really struggle if you're trying to do it by yourself. Because one of the things I love about this podcast from meeting our patrons, a lot of people, you are not alone. There are hundreds and thousands of teachers just like you who think the same way, who feel the same way. You are not in this alone. We are all struggling, and we are all not okay. But together and listening to each other, we can get through this. Help spread the word about this podcast if you can. Leave a good review. Just tell people about it. All right, this is episode 120. Enjoy. All right. Okay, so um, let's do it. Hey, guys, welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and joining me today is Miss Sparkles. Hey, y'all. And also with us today is Mr. Wayne Kerr. Did you find the Victoria's Secret episode? Sorry, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> and last okay. but not least, we have Shirley Temper. You think because I'm a movie star, I don't have feelings. Well, you're wrong. I do have feelings. I'm an actress. I've got all of them. That is my favorite movie. <laughs> yes. Yes. What is it? First Wives Club. Yes, uh, my um. I never saw that one. <laughs> Lame. You should watch yeah. it. It's great. I'm yeah. sure it has redeeming qualities. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm happy you guys are here. It's, uh, you know what? Uh, this school year, like this whole semester, it sucks. Yep. Like, yeah. It, it sucks mm-hmm. bad. Like the media has finally caught on. There's articles. If you go on Reddit today, there's like five or six reporters who are looking to interview teachers who are upset or burnt out at the current situation. Mm. And it's just nuts. And before, like, we get a couple silly things on Reddit about teaching and some good stories, almost everything is like, I put in my resignation. I'm so burned out. I can't believe. And it's just, this is, this is weird because it's like, 
it's almost like winter break never happened. Like everyone was kind of down and drained at the end of winter break or at the end of uh, December when we were finishing up the fall to go in. And usually like we get a little bit of a reset and then we're good for a little while. But no, we jumped in and then like the school districts just slapped us in the face with their dicks. And really COVID did, the parents (laughs) did, but it's just been, I mean, levels of disrespect from uh, administrators, not even administrators, like lawmakers saying, we need to keep those babysitters in their place. We're just trying to get jobs out there mm-hmm. and act like we're trying to hold up. And it's it's bananas. So part of my other job is I place orders and do stuff for educational companies. And I got a purchase order over last week from a school secretary saying, hey, if you can file this and give us a quote, we'll get the purchase order out. And I was doing it this morning. Immediately, like when I sent it to the person who had requested it two days ago, I got an email back. Um, I am no longer working at this district. Please forward all of this to so and so and so and so. They are taking over my responsibilities. Oh. And so I contacted the original teacher who had placed the order through the secretary. Said like, "Hey, what's going on?" It turned out the secretary had been asked to substitute and cover classes. And her line of reasoning was, this is not in my job description. I am not a teacher. I have no training. I am here to do the secretary stuff. Goodbye. And she walked out. But it's not, I mean, schools are scraping the barrel to get anyone in there when it would just be easier to shut it down for a week. I was talking to some patrons during the real wait, the real waitress, the real genius watch party. And one of them said her school in Florida had just finally got approval from the government to shut down because their cases are so bad. They have been given two days that they were allowed to shut down. No more. Because if they had any more, they'd be penalized. And you can't cure everyone in two days. You can't even quarantine in two days. I mean, it's just, it's just shitty. I know everything's going around. Everyone's getting sick, but it is insane just to try to keep pretending we need to act like it's normal right now. And because of that, people are burning out left and right because our expectations, it's, it's worse than it was last year when everyone was virtual. Yes. Because then the like expectations were lowered so much so that like okay we'll just get through this year and it'll be fine and then we came back and everyone's like oh yeah we'll raise the bar again but the bar was never raised expectations were still almost just as low as hey you can just turn this in at any point during the year you're not allowed to fail anybody no matter what they're not doing or refusing to do and then now it's like yeah um just uh just have the kids in school if they're present if you're there I mean, go for it. Wayne, what's been going on with you? Oh, call me out like that. It's so sexy. (laughs) No, I am still keeping up with my less man's doing what it is that I'm supposed to do. But I honestly have no idea if my um, administrator is checking them because, hey, guess what? They were out last week with the Coco. Yeah. So there's that. Um, I will tell you that... um, I may actually, like, I, I was a fool, and I checked email just, like, two hours ago. And uh, the number of emails I have from both parents and kids and also a couple of teachers saying, hey, we're out with a cocoa, was, like, probably around, like, 33% of the email that I received over the weekend. And I'm honestly literally sitting here thinking after we get done with this that I may send out an email to all my kids saying, hey, guess what? The group project that we're working on right now, we're going to put it on hold. We're going to switch gears, and then we'll come back to it when everybody gets here. So it's nerve-wracking. Um, yeah. What are you going to do? It's Everybody's getting sick, and they expect us to keep moving forward as though nothing's going on. It's dumb. Mark? What about you? I, I I just am so ready to be out of school. My soul is having a hard time going to work every day right now. And honestly, if I could find a different job, I would just find one now and like be done with it. But I'm trying to at least still hang in and have fun with the kids because it's not really, it's not completely their fault that everything has gone to shit, but yeah, you know, my district is one of those districts that has really done a whole, like what's COVID. We don't know. Oh, I guess everything is finesy finesy. So they're sticking their heads in the sand and pretending everything is great. While at the same time getting upset that they don't have enough 
coverage in the classroom. And it's like all the signing bonuses and extra sub pay in the world isn't going to make people want to sub right now or teach right now because it just feels like every year I've been teaching, there's been more and more nonsense added and less and less enjoying the kids. Yeah. So that's where I'm at today. <laughs> no, it's not worth it. They don't pay enough for anyone to be there. You can make more as an Uber driver or a food delivery person than you can as a teacher right now. And then you don't have to put up with the bullshit. You just get to drive around and listen to music all day. It's not that bad of a gig. And it's just, I, I wouldn't want to be a sub, but they don't even, can't even get enough subs to fill because when like 40% of your staff is absent, what are you yep. going to do? And now the line seems to be for a lot of the schools in my area is just to put their heads in the sand. Like my daughter's district right now, they've changed the rules about reporting where before I'd get like pretty much a standard form every single day. Someone has tested positive in the school for COVID-19. All contact tracing has been done. Like all that's whatever, blah, blah, blah. Which is a which is yeah. a lot, but they just changed it and now made it that you will only get a contact form if you are an elementary school parent and there has been a reported infect or confirmed infection in the classroom. High school, middle school, they are no longer doing contract tracing. They are no longer sending out emails. And if anything happens in the rest of the elementary school, they're not going to say anything, but only if it's in your child's classroom, which is like, well, what's the point? And of course, immediately I got like three, like every single day, because my kid's class is exposed as fuck. Yeah. But it, I mean, it's just what it is right now. I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, and I don't know, think the science holds up that maybe we'll just have a big bubble, everyone will get sick. Hopefully the numbers will start dropping in a week or two once, you know, everyone who can catch it has caught it. But we will see what happens with that. But <laughs> Shirley, what's going on with you and your school? Well, um, they've stopped contact tracing or sending any type of notification. I'm each class. Um, there's at least uh, at least a third of my kids are out per class period. My after school thing that Sparkles and I do concurrently at the same time. I have yet to do a damn thing with it because I have so many sick kids, so many sick kids that I can't. I mean, our principals seems to be pretty cool about it. Nobody's up our butts about, you know, lesson plans and stuff like that. I think we're all just trying to survive. So that's at least something. Yeah. A little bit of understanding goes a long, long way, but there are some people who don't seem to have understanding when it comes towards their children's school and not their children's education, more about their children just being at school. The school's not safe. Fuck you. Well, we're trying to make it as safe as possible. Well, the schools, well, we still need you to go to school. Well, it's not safe because everyone has COVID now. I don't care. Send them anyway. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. this complete double speak bullshit that's just driving us crazy, which brings us to the first article. Okay, my beauties. This is an article that we found. It is not from the Reddits. Woo! Okay. Woo! Um, it is called New. <laughs> Woo, no Reddits. New Texas teachers leaving the job after their first year study says. A recent study found new teachers in Texas are leaving the job after their first year at an alarming rate. It's an issue education leaders say is adding to staff shortages. It's an issue education leaders say is adding to staff shortages districts are already facing from the pandemic. Quote, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of burnout from teachers in the first year of teaching. And what? Said Jackie, what? Said Jackie Anderson, president of the Houston Federation of Teachers. The 2021 teacher, Texas Teacher Workforce Report found almost 50% of teachers quit after their very first year. Lamar CISD recently had a first-year teacher go viral in a recording. Quote, I want to be fired at this point. I am literally going to hurt myself if I have to keep coming here, said an unnamed sixth-grade teacher at Harry Wright Junior High. The teacher has since been put on administrative leave. The district sent a statement condemning the teacher's comments. Anderson says it sheds light on a bigger issue. I've had calls from teachers who called and asked how they can get out of their contracts without penalty. She says there are several factors contributing to the deficit when being teacher and staff shortages. This causes a real hardship in the teachers that 
are there are having to double up their classes and cover additional classes, quote, said Anderson. The other, she says, is pay. Quote, one thing they have to do is start to compensate. You're going to get burnout out if you have to work two to three jobs to make ends meet. I can speak from experience as an educator of 33 years. The report found from 2011 to 2019, average teacher salary in Texas had little to no increase at all. Anderson is calling for change. Quote, we're going to really have to look revamping education and what's expected and required. She says the shortages directly affect the classroom. Bottom line of this, our students are suffering. I fucking hate yeah. that. Can we please, can I rant for a second? Um, our students are suffering. No shit, yeah. because we're suffering, dumb fucks. It starts with us. Sorry. I hate it when they try to guilt you into feeling bad for being a human because it's mm. best for the children. Yeah. No, I hate that. No, a hundred percent. I agree with you, Shirley. But the thing is, imagine how fucking hard your first year teaching was. Every first year teacher, even if you're in the most balanced, neurotypical, gifted, like well funded school, is challenging as hell. But I mean, just imagine how fucking hard it was. And then we have like our weird semester last year, our weird virtual year last year. We're like, hey, everything you learned in school, um, everything that was the proper way to do things, that's the best for the children, we're not doing any of that now. No. And then you get this year where it's like, yeah, know how we weren't doing any of that? We're not doing any of that times 100. We're just trying. You just got to be in here and be a warm body. But make sure those grades go up because we're still testing. So don't don't forget about that. Yeah. And it's just bullshit. And then you have these poor, sweet – I'm going to call them sweet teachers. They might not all be sweet. But I just think, I mean, you don't start teaching because, like, you're in it for the money. You do no. it because you want to teach, because you're excited about it, because it's there are things – it's a vocation. It's a calling. And then you get there and then they're just beating the shit out of you because they're not paying much because they don't have to or mm -hmm. they feel they don't have to. And then they're putting everyone through the ringer and then acting surprised that all these selfish teachers are quitting. People have been quitting all year. People were retiring in droves. Number one, that's the first half is we lost a lot of the boomer teachers because when they saw the writing on the wall, they didn't want to learn how to deal with virtual stuff. And they said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and take my retirement now. So then we had a teacher shortage from that. And then we had normal teachers who had been on the fence for a while and tired of bullshit. And then they quit because they were sick of the bullshit. Then we had this year where it was even worse, where every single month I saw thousands of teachers quitting. We saw the number in November alone for teachers quitting was 75,000 in the U.S., mm. Mm -hmm. And now we have here, uh, there were a lot of teachers who waited for the break. They didn't like say, okay, I got to get out right this moment. And they've dropped out. But this week or two, I mean, screw it. This is not good for mental health. When you're being literally told, just watch the kids, shut your mouth and show up. I don't care if you're sick. I don't care if the kids are sick. We just need to do this right now. And fuck it. But they're not compensating it. They're not like, hey, you guys are heroes. You guys are the real troopers. You guys deserve a raise. No, they're just like, yeah, fuck you. Do your do what you're supposed to be doing. Shut up. That's why everyone's burning out. And it's so heartbreaking that we're going to be losing the profession because of this. Because so many people who might have been interested in being a teacher now, I'm like, yeah, fuck it. I'm not going towards that unless they you know, start paying what a real job would be. How many teachers do you know that are on like need food stamps, take care of their kids who would have a second job? Because their kid wants to do sports or their kid wants to do something extracurricular. I'd say about 45 to 65% of the teachers I know have some kind of second job side hustle. And there are some that are blessed with maybe they have a partner who might make a lot of money. You can do that. But if you don't have that, oh, shit. I mean, it's just I feel like we're in a doomed profession right now that they've been wanting to kill it for years. And now we're in the spot where the schools could have got their shit together after zoom i mean after the zoom year but they didn't they could have increased funding but they didn't and now they're like screw you schools you're not doing your job yeah you guys haven't taken care of us nope. you've left us unnourished in the back of a closet and made fun of us the whole time and we're fucking sick of it and we're burning out and now when you're losing 50 percent of first year teachers mm. Mm. I mean, you can't even say like, okay, well, we're just going to get new ones. There's a hundred more where you came from. Yeah, they're not going to do it either. No, especially when you see that community colleges are having a decrease in enrollment of education classes. So, mm. I mean, yeah. Why take on the student debt 
to do a job that's not going to pay you that well, especially when most districts aren't requiring it now. They're like, oh, uh, yeah, we'll just emergency certify you. And um, yep. and now there's nothing wrong with teachers who get emergency certified. I think I if anyone to wants say, to. No, no, no. I'm not. <laughs> but really, Offensive. what's the what's the point of going through the college system and taking on the debt if you don't have to? If you can do something else that might explore and then come in with an emergency cert. That's just as valid. My oldest um, talks all the time about wanting to be like an art teacher or theater teacher. And the other day I very seriously said, I don't want to hear you say that anymore. I'm just not going to let you do it. You've got to, you don't want to, you don't want to do this. You need to do something else. And it sucked because I, I don't want to have that conversation with my kid. No, you and I have talked about, we talked about that on the podcast because my daughter wants to be an art teacher and I would love that for her, but I'm not popping the bubble yet. I'm going to, See what education <laughs> like, does in ten I years. Stomped on that bubble. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Wayne, what's this you're saying about Texas Governor Abbott? Okay, so Abbott apparently declared today through the 29th as school option choice, and they're sending down a whole bunch of links so that you can actually go and see what are your options. So if you don't want to take the public school. Then you can take a look at charter or magnet or private. Oh, and, fuck. Stuff. and I'm just fuck like, you. I mean, exactly. That's what it is. Um, look, I'm not going to be one of those people that tells you that um, we need to approach education as throw more money in it will fix the cell problem, but you're not throwing enough adequate money at it. And in which case, then they're going to be like, well, if our public schools aren't doing well enough, then let's go ahead and you know, do vouchers and brochures for all this other shit. And I'm sorry. I don't think that any charter school is doing any better, especially when they're more concerned about the bank or they're more concerned about banking than they are about schooling. The thing is, instead of like giving money and telling people to go to private schools and charter schools, maybe you could just fucking fund education in the first place and quit taking away public education money. I am so sick of this. I mean, okay, so we saw the thing in New Mexico last week where New Mexico is using the National Guard Reserve as substitute teachers in order to not have to close the schools. Yeah. That's how far they're going. They're literally bringing in the weekend troops. Now, the, once again, there's nothing not, there's nothing wrong with national reserve. The guys and women who serve up, sign up to do it. Like, what is it? Two weekends a month or one week in a month. Yeah. But they were supposed to be serving their country. And now they're going to be treated like shit in the classroom as a substitute. Which yeah. sucks for them because I mean, how degrading is that? Yeah. <laughs> and how it's almost like we know what it? that is. What? Yeah. What? The, the whole situation is fucked. Sparkles, what do you have to say about this? We haven't heard well, you yet. There's a couple of thoughts that I have I've toyed around with today. Number one, we live in the state of Texas. So, dear listeners, this may or may not apply to your state, but it does apply to the one that these podcasters are in right now. And public education is literally enshrined in our state constitution. Providing an adequate public education is specifically called out in the Texas state constitution. So, right. So as much as these fucking politicians keep trying and trying and trying to kill us, guess what? Every student in the state of Texas is fundamentally given the right from the moment they step foot in this state, whether they are born here or move here to a quality, adequately funded public education period. So the fact that this state cannot, which if we were are still our own nation, I think we would be like ninth in terms of wealth, like just the state of Texas. So the fact that this state cannot figure out how to adequately fund districts, fund schools, give schools enough money that they can budget appropriately for teacher salaries and classroom supplies and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to me is, is mind boggling already. It's a choice. Yeah. Wayne brought up, um, vouchers, which they're all like, Oh my God, we got to get vouchers. So parents can choose where they're going to send their kids to school. Bullshit. Here's what's going to happen. I work at this public, I own a private school. Okay. I own a private school. Well, I only want certain types of students in my fancy pantsy private school or my fancy pantsy charter school. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, every family in the state of Texas gets a $5,000 voucher. Guess what? All of a sudden, 
our prices have gone up $7,000. Yes. So now that money is just lost. It's just wasted because most private schools will do that because they, like I'm thinking, I live in a major metropolitan area in this state and there are a ton of incredible private schools here and they cost a fucking fortune already. But the families that live in the huge ass mansions 10 minutes from my apartment, they won't bat an eye if that goes up five, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. They're going to find the money to send their kids to what they think is the best private school in the city. But that private school is going to do everything it can to ensure, you know, Joe Blow public school kid can't get in, cannot afford to come. Not to mention, how are we supposed to deal with transportation if all of a sudden everybody's going to private schools or charter schools? They don't provide transportation. So then you've got, again, the haves and the have-nots. So the families who can drive their kids to school or buy their kids' cars can send their kids wherever – and the families that don't have that, well, you just have to, even though your family gets the voucher, well, you still can only go to the neighborhood school and all of the money that would have come from your friends attending that school, well, it's gone now. So it was shitty. Now it's like real shitty. Mega shitty. No, the whole thought process behind a lot of this voucher program seems to buy, and this could be my tinfoil hat, but I've seen people actually say things about this is that it's a way to resegregate or resegregate the schools. Absolutely. Yep. And that way the people you don't want, because it's a private school, they can do what they want. They can teach whatever religion stuff they want in there Mm -hmm. can be there. And then also the thing they control is what kind of school is allowed to accept the voucher or will be able to receive funding from a voucher. And I'd also like to, I just want to point out with the segregation thing, it's not just, Racial segregation, although it is also that. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> they also want to be segregated from special needs kids. Yep. Mm-hmm. They, they also want their kids be, to go to school with those kinds of children. Right. The they don't poor want their children, kids, the mentally right. challenged kids, children. Mentally challenged, anybody who has a, le- a severe learning disability. Hey, guys, guess what? 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 What's that? We have a Patreon. What? Is that like paper? That's right. (laughs) We have a Patreon for as little as five to ten dollars a month. You can join us and hear all kinds of extra episodes, exclusive content. You can join our watch parties. You can hear us stream live when we do live call-ins. In fact, I'm not 100% if I'm going to do a live call-in, but I'm pretty sure this week while I'm at this educational conference, we're going to be recording and interviewing a bunch of teachers. So we might be going live then, so that'll be awesome. And anyway, it's a great time, so you need to do it. Support us, keep us going, and do it now. We love you. Would you rather be forced to shout, God isn't real, at every person who blesses you after you sneeze, (laughs) or break into a sperm bank and drink everything? No, number one, number one. I take option one. Uh, birds are real, also. Oh God, thought- that made my gag reflex like, <laughs> like oh God. So I take like- it you're not a swallower. <laughs> no, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a uh, choker. I'm dying now. Thanks a lot. You just gave me COVID because of that question. But no, I would not oh. Poor Mr. Sparkles. Uh, <laughs> um. You've only been single for like a week and it's already started. Why? <laughs> I'll have you know, Mr. Sparkles is very satisfied. Okay. Thanks. Well, good, good, good. I, I will never bring it up with him. <laughs> um, what about you, Miss Temper? What's your choice there? God isn't real. Birds aren't real. I would add something to it. Mm-hmm. Birds Every aren't time real. for Birds the rest real. of your life. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can see all the I'm old sorry. ladies just crossing themselves. Elvis, Elvis, you would go into a sperm bank and you know drink a bunch of protein. Oh fuck no. Okay. Fuck okay. No. 
Okay, exactly. exactly. No, I'm with you. I'm not arguing with you. I just hadn't gotten to my turn yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mr. Wanker? What's your choice there? <laughs> Believe it or not, since I've donated to so many sperm banks, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm leaving. Wanker. Leaving. <laughs> No, uh, let's see here. I'm definitely going with uh, God, 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 um, birds work for the government and so do the squirrels. The birds work for the bourgeoisie. You're right. I mean, yeah. yeah. Exactly. All righty then. <laughs> well, folks, um, thanks for listening to another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. I appreciate <laughs> everyone out there, all of us. If you get a chance, find some teachers who feel like you, who see the same way, and help spread the word about our podcast. It helps us get out get out there, you know, grassroots style. We're also on Instagram and Facebook, and you can see <laughs> us there. And as of now, you can stream us on Audible, and you can even just say to your whatever your smart device in your house mm. hey alexa or hey google or whatever it is play teacher needs to drink podcast and it will play because we're on all the amazon stuff now so oh, oh, and now my you. my alexa's chanting back to me alexa shut up <laughs> <laughs> i like to whisper to her and make her whisper back to me it's creepy it's creepy <laughs> yeah but are you whispering dirty things to each other because that's kind of funny yeah. I mean, I'm not you. So, no. No. I'm a normal human who interacts appropriately with electronic devices. <laughs> All right, friends. Well, thanks for listening. Miss Sparkles, it was great hearing from you. It was good to be here. Y'all have a great week. <laughs> <laughs> it was forced. <laughs> and also, big thanks to Mr. Wayne Kerr. Now I need to uh, figure out where the sperm banks are. <laughs> oh, no. Glug, glug, glug. Oh, and last but not least, <laughs> Miss Temper. Ladies, you have to be strong and independent. And remember, don't get mad. Get everything. Get everything. <laughs> <laughs> That was All right, my friends. Ivana Trump. Yes. Rest <laughs> up. Take care of yourselves. Deep breaths, deep drinks. Cheers. Woo! Cheers. Glug, glug, glug. All right, friends. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast comes out every Wednesday. And if there's anything you'd like to share with us here at Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast, hit us up through the contact page of our website at teacherneedsdrinkpodcast.com. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Lud Lamb Dramatics. If you are a theater teacher or no one in your building and you need some supplies, go to Lud Lamb Dramatics. Help them out. They have some amazing posters at only like eight bucks each. And there are these huge full-size glossy posters. They have like 45 on a variety of topics. Go check them out. Lud Lamb Dramatics. I'd like to thank my hosts who were with me today. Miss Shirley Temper, Miss Sparkles, Mr. Wanker. You guys are my heroes. If my friend is listening, Bunny O'Hare, happy birthday. We love you so much. I wish we could have a party with you, but COVID. Anyway, everyone out there, take care of your mental health. Make sure you get some rest. All the good stuff. Try your best not to burn out, but if you do, take some time breathe and you know take care of yourself you're what's important we love you guys cheers bye